Hello guys and welcome back to our 100 mil max force limit run where as you remember we started as Majapahit then we became a shogunate and now we are conquering the whole world with our subjects for now the goal is to just conquer the world and create as many as, as them as possible in the meantime I'm slowly building up more force limit buildings in this uh, subjects and I'm also starting to develop them especially the colonial nations to get even more of that force limit from them we see my max for stream is 1.8 million, which is alright because I did not start stacking the key modifiers yet. Just one more thing before we start. Thank you so much for everyone that is already supporting the channel, but I know that half of you watching now are not subscribed yet. So if you want to get notified about all of the great content coming in this series, this is a perfect comment to support the channel. So I think this is pretty good. And so we are gonna continue this expansion with very much waiting for the age of revolutions because i want to have the ignore coring crunch modifier that will allow me to core sound the points that i want to take for myself in asia what i will also do which will decrease my force limit is to change all of our uh, colonies type from crown colonies or anything else to self guarding colonies because that's gonna give them development cost modifier and just uh, keep building more of universities in their provinces and developing them you see for now brazil is all fully built up Time for the others. Oh, Terra Australia, that's a wrong name. Why the hell is it named like that? Info, what the hell? We all know that it is uh, South Cuba, right? You know, and if you're wondering with this setup, how much it takes to record one episode? I'm not counting it, but it's probably around 20 hours to play it around 40 to 50 years right now. That's how slow the game goes and how much micromanagement I'm doing for this content for you guys. Tier 9 guarantee for me is gonna be Machiavellianism Ring. I probably said wrong. Uh, which is gonna give us Max Absolutism. A impact doesn't matter. And with this Max Absolutism, you know, I might take an additional privilege thanks to it. Like, for example, Reform Progress Growth, that is always obvious. Now, one of the big advantages of the fact that we're making so many subjects and I'm not taking that land for myself is that I wouldn't be able to death all of this land by myself. So for example this little poor Hears province from Seymour was developed 26 times from 3 death to 29 death. Since I got an event for plus 15% construction cost I'm gonna hold on building any non-crucial buildings for the next 10 years that's gonna be a lot of money we'll save maybe i'll just spend some monuments in the meantime some investments i did uh, into brazil for first million buildings i did before the construction cost increase they allowed me to get to 2 million of first limb because brazil by itself is already giving 104 of it and we're gonna just scale it since dutch had a huge fleet i'm gonna just most importantly get rid of all of their coasts and then we can focus on the other province, but looking at what's happening here, I'm almost able to fully annex them. Only one province will be left, 250% over extension. First monument I'm investing into is uh, in Mentese, the mausoleum of Helicarnassus, which as you see is giving us, uh, most importantly, average monarch lifespan. I know you guys are fans of Border Gore, that's why I'm gonna present this to you with the pieces against VJ. Again, to just cripple the country. And as promised a bit earlier, now all everything that we're conquering in Asia that I can call, I will be keeping for myself to this as client states later. It might be a bit of our extension now, but it's not a problem. I had to pause here because we just hit 2137 of max force limit. Of course, 2.1 million of troops that we have. Enlightenment just spawned and it's in Osnabrück. With the Age of Revolution starting, you see we have uh, four of the monsters completed and I don't really have a chance to get any other of them. I can't be a parliament as a shogun, I cannot become an emperor as a shogun and I'm nowhere close to 125% of the discipline. So Golden Era is safe, I will take it for the last 50 years. And uh, you see that uh, in the player's map mode, we are pretty much left with uh, crushing the remnants of the what used to be empires like Vijay, the Ottomans, Austria, as well as Spain. There are also a couple of miners we didn't uh, kill yet, so like Kitara, Adal, and a few more like Pomeranian, Lithuania. And uh, finally, we have two big gigantic nations to deal with. One is Portugal with, uh, you see, two wars of war score cost, another one is Great Britain with 
four wars of wars Korkost. And they both allied to each other with colonial empires. So as for Great Britain and Spain want to deal with both of these guys at the same time with a few truce breaks. But before that, I'm just thinking about Spanish war score cost 162, and they are granted by Great Britain. The revolution just uh, spawned in Kyoto, and uh, it's interesting because uh, you know it was very likely that it would happen in our provinces because a subject cannot have a spawn of the revolution. So it's between me, Great Britain, Spain, and a few other nations that are still alive. But at the same time, provinces outside of Europe have much, much, much longer mean time to happen versus the provinces in Europe. So I'm surprised it started in Kyoto. Now, the issue of the revolution is that it will start spreading. You see, it's already going to the other provinces with the progress, which is unfortunate, but I think it's at the same time not a big of a problem. The main issue of the revolution in your province is that it's impacting your local unrest and the more of absolutes you have the more impact it's having and since my absolute is at max you'll see that we'll be increasing my unrest by 20 ish 25 in the provinces so i will certainly have rebels there which is fine uh, it's worth watching that how, how we can get you to the revolution where it's even by going for a disaster which i don't think i want to do i don't even have it available yet maybe after a month tick or simply waiting 30 years since the uh, center spawned. Which, I mean, we are finishing our world conquest, so I'm fine waiting because I will be anyway just sitting and having my promises and my subjects promises. You see that interestingly the revolution seems to be spreading only to our provinces. Which is probably good news because my subjects might not be able to handle the rebels. And continuously developing provinces my subjects, including this one province here in uh, Canada that only costs free break click. For the war against Great Britain and Portugal, because they are to each other, I'm taking my whole fleet into one place because I rather cannot defeat the navy, but what I can do is have a, such a big navy they will be afraid to engage on me. That's why I have so many heavy ships. This navy is gonna go and take these free stacks and try land in the British Isles with all these troops, while I also have three stacks, four stacks ready to siege down African part of Great Britain, I'll do one here to siege down African part of Portugal, and uh, one, two, three, four stacks running in the new world to fight. So, Mr. Great Britain, 307,000 troops, but no manpower. Hello there, it's so laggy. Take London. Should we take Portugal as a co belligerent? Would that call anyone? I'm honestly, I just want to separate piece Portugal, breaking the alliance with Great Britain, so I'm gonna be able to um, truce break Great Britain multiple times. First, one in nature for revolutions is definitely ignore coring distance because I'm gonna leverage it a lot in the peace deck against Great Britain. And don't treat this as a free war. I just peace out Portugal, but Great Britain by itself still has almost 400,000 troops. And the subjects have uh, also pretty decent amount of it. And you see that actually in the British Isles I'm about to lose the battle. So it means I need more troops around here. I should be anyway able to just run away to Kent. Where they can't reach me. Yeah, and I have to bring more troops ASAP to defend in London. Unfortunately they, they, ca they could go to Kent. So I'm bringing my transports back ASAP. So most of these troops can run away there because unfortunately one stack will be left behind and I don't have enough transport ships to take all of them. Oh boy, I will come back stronger. I still can land in London, meaning like I can bring all of my troops here and just keep reinforcing with my ships since I have the naval advantage. Just one note, it's 1716 and the game is unplayable during this kind of big wars where... See? This is the stability of the game because all of the subjects are included and they're maneuvering in that war. It's gonna be an insanely big battle. But uh, yeah, I have to go in there with everything I have because reinforcing like from here to here takes like two weeks or more. So an ATK stack could even lose the battle in that uh, in that time period. You go in there, go immediately for the others. You see, Great Britain is trying their best to win the battle over here, uh, but they're not only losing. They're also losing their whole main power in this battle. This battle was certainly not the best for <laughs> the British. And uh, the quantity keeps melting. You see, we destroyed the Great Britain a little bit. They're down to 6,000 troops. 
And as uh, for our PC in this war, I'm mainly focusing on the overseas provinces, so I don't have to switch faraway islands around the world. But at the same time, for example, taking most of Africa, but leaving only the level 8 forts uh, while in the homeland, I'm only taking provinces allowing me to stand next to the level 8 forts. And this is because uh, I turned off all of them. These forts do not have any garrison. So when I choose break them within the next couple of days, there will be no garrison to protect these forts. And I don't have to really you know, uh, care about the truce break itself because I have out of Diplon Adimana saved. <laughs> you see the losers. But I'm also gonna release out of subjects to decrease my overextension. And good news is that I have the reform Machiavellian read, which is gonna just decrease my, uh, you know, how I'm gonna hurt with the truce break by minus one. That's, uh, yeah, I'll have to wait a month to one way or another to attack them again. So this force will have some garrison, but it's gonna be very minimal. You know, we have to hurry up with killing Ribbiton and full next in them because the colonists are already disloyal and Spain is supporting their independence. In the meantime we just hit 3 million of force limit. I just don't want to be at peace time because the amount of the rebel pop-ups I'm getting from subjects is insane. Let's declare the war again. You see that should be minus 2 stability and a huge luck as always. So, uh, technically I don't even have to boost it, but I will boost it back to 1 and reduce the war resolution. And now I'm immediately going after all of the forts, making sure they do not regain any of Garrison. Even if there's gonna be not really sitting even down, but since Garrison is just super strong, it's gonna be fast. You can see this way we've got almost 50% war score within less than a year of the war. The issue is if I had a bit more of mill points saved, I could just breach the walls and rush every single fort, but I just rush the key forts instead. While for the rest I'm waiting to breach the walls naturally to rush them, except here right? I don't have enough of attackers to see to rush it. I need more troops here in the continent. Can you imagine that we've gained 0.8 wars come from in uh, land battles? We will of course many more of them. And we've lost around 20 wars come from naval battles in this war, mainly from my subjects, just trolling. It's because instead of pissing this war already, you see, we are still at 50%. Okay, guys, this is where I'm gonna quit this war. Just before I do so, let's turn off the force again. With this war done, Great Britain is still on the 190% of promise was Cocos, so I still need two wars to defeat them. This is simply because they death the hell out of these provinces around here. I'm about to send this final piece to Great Britain, but there's one small issue. Spain's occupying the last province they need to take to fully annex them. That's why I'll have to go ahead and declare war on Spain. <sighs> Austrian Pomerania will join, I'm just gonna call Pomerania's scope legion to eat them in this war. I was wondering why my ass is getting so much killed by the Spaniards. With the same troops, same general, same stats, I was getting twice to thrice more of damage. And it turned out we are tech 25, right? But uh, my tech group is still having units from tech 19. There's six technologies behind. See this? They lost 15k. I was cool. For fuck's sake, almost a hundred thousand troops. No, I did not have that bad of a general. Honestly, never again, guys. This kind of the gameplay. The game is just unplayable. See the stability of it. Four, seven, eight everywhere. This dog shit units. And the cost of truce breaks and millions of rebels to deal with them. Tier 10 guarantee form is... Uh, ah, let's take Province Wars Cocos to just finish off these few nations faster. And you see, on Spain I'll be doing similar strategy to what I did in Great Britain. I mean that I turned off the fort and left a couple of them in the hands of Spain. So in the next war I should be able to fully annex them. Because the Province Wars Cocos is down to 70%. But also now I can just go ahead and full annex Great Britain. Right, just confirm. Facialization, annexation. Ooh, at last. Great and down. Next step is Spain. I just want to show you the new world map mode now. See, all of these are now my colonies. Finally, I can release East India Company in the Andamans. Of course I'm gonna do that. It looks like the revolution disaster started loading. I 
really don't want to go for it, so I have to get out my stability up to free and probably also put a bit of a break on truce break. So I'll finish off Spain and the rest of the big powers and for now I'm not gonna truce break them. Full annexation of Spain at last. I also need to take over their colonies. So now we're only left with a couple of Portuguese colonies. So Portugal is my next goal. We'll see also so like <sighs> so exhausting how slow the game is. But yeah, I absolutely hate the naming of this colony, so it's just time to work on them. It's not Newfoundland because obviously that's New Zealand. Not Louisiana, but uh, Alaska. And not 13 colonies, but Chile should be here. Australia, obviously. Cuba. And at the very last, Mexico. So, our first one is rate 4.2 million. With tech 26 on admin, I can unlock a 30 second to last idea group. But I will still have three ideas to be. It's economic, it's influence, and offensive. And obviously I have two slots left, but I will have to replace, uh, reduce ideas with something else. Let's for now. I don't have much admin money, I have a lot of diplo points. Let's for now go and pick influence ideas, which is gonna be income from vassals. Let's take a look. 277, 554, which is good and not good because uh, some vassals might just go bankrupt with no money. And you know, I, I could probably have like 10 to 20k easy of income, but uh, that would require bankrupting most of my subjects by stringing the trade for most of them. For now, I'm just stringing the trade from a couple of them to, you know, make sure that they don't go bankrupt. And this is still enough money for any, all of our needs. 5 million force limit, 95 to go. 6 hundred of extension, just perfect. This is a process I took from the Ottomans, Portugal, as well as VJ in the free simultaneous wars. World Conquest is pretty much completed, if you take a look at the diplomatic map mode, except uh, Ottomans and Vijay, they both for just one war and with both I still have a bit of a truce. I could truce break to finish the World Conquest in the next 12 months, but I don't have to. So you know, now I'm waiting for the truce to end, and in general for the whole game to end, I'll be building up and deviling the hell out of all of my subjects. You see that even if I go to development and I go include subjects and uh, we list it by death cost, you see how cheaply you can death, we will get it even lower by getting more universities, by getting the merchant guilds loyal, by getting tech 27, which is development cost modifier, and for the last 50 years I also embraced the golden era. So we can now imagine how much I'm gonna get out of this. I will also go ahead and cancel religious ideas because I don't need it anymore and instead I'm gonna start filling economic ideas that I need. There you go, after 30 years the central of revolution Kyoto is removed and the modifier from all the provinces. This is super useful because I had this in most of my provinces and it was insane amount of unrest that is right now just left. I would like to just mark it to you that, you see, half my subject's development is right now 20,779 and I'm gonna write it down for myself as well because I want to see how much we'll end up with with all of the deving that we're applying and of course the deving that the subjects will be doing. Because you see, I did not click, click it even once but by January it's already 794. So the AIs are doing their job. I've got tech 27. So we take a look at the dev costs again. In my subjects you see it's heaven but for now i'm gonna use it in a different uh, thing so i'm not gonna use it to focus on um, increasing the development but instead i'm gonna use it to focus on let's take a look and looking building slots as you see some prices especially in the south from america cannot have the conscription centers built so i'm gonna dev this process usually up to 10 development to be able to unlock the new building slot and get the construction center. Finishing influence ideas, which is faster for summit contribution, allowed me to reach my first 10 million force limit. Then client state act is gonna allow me to get another 50% of Vassal for Summit contribution, which means we have 11.3 million of Force Limit. My autonomous estate here is under 100% Vassal for Summit contribution, thanks to which we are already at 13.7 million of Force Limit, but obviously we have a long way to go. So we're releasing client trades in all of my Asian provinces. A big project that I'm dealing with now is uh, clearing the provinces from buildings 
and building conscription centers in their place because then if they release these provinces I can't delete buildings from the provinces of my subjects and yes I know there is a macro builder that delete buildings but see I'm more interested in what provinces I cannot build a conscription center and then locally I have to check what building can be removed so now this is the buildings map for conscription centers and this is a buildings map mold for universities. So you see in the universities, I'm, the, the map is the most lagging, so it's really hard to even build the most universities. I'm just usually leaving the computer with an auto clicker. And uh, yeah, you see the old world still has some pace to catch up with. It's, even if I won't be doing this process, AI should be doing it cheaper. And if you combine mind diving with AI's diving, you'll see that last time I told you it was 20,779. So it's over a thousand more than that last time. I would definitely kill the biggest nations in Asia, taking this process over for myself. So at the very end, I'll release and replace client states because they maybe cast towards the diplomat, but I can also make the marshes. So the impact on the force will be even bigger. So if we, for example, uh, you see that right now, usually one promise minus, of course, depending on the development, but they usually give us around two to five development. But if you scroll down, you see, for example, Kangra 7, it's 9.4 development that it's giving us. And that Kangra 7 has 16 development. So how about we make them my marsh? If you make them my marsh, you see that they get all of these modifiers. So Kangra 7 right now it's 13.6 of force that they're giving us. So imagine now that we release this kind of nations everywhere where I could. So in all of my Asian provinces, plus nations that are killed. So definitely Jin and Lanna, maybe Jiangsu, maybe Brunei, we will see. For now, I'm just not rushing because we still have a lot of time Why I'm feeling eco ideas. 15 for million force limit is here only 85 million to go since we have 60 years to go i'll go and a lot of powerpoints i'm gonna go ahead and finally embrace the golden era which is the old power cost so if we go ahead to development tab and our subjects <laughs> this is more than lovely we're gonna dev the hell out of them see how laggy this one going to that screen and this also means I can go ahead and uh, continue finishing my Echo Ideas, which is about to happen. So, you know, as soon as I finish Echo Ideas and I save some admin mana, I'll go ahead and start clearing borders in Asia to be able to release more subjects at the end of the game. There it goes, as a reminder, end of Echo Ideas gives development for manufacturers, but I'm not gonna build them. Goose Plus modifier and plenty of policies, including... Uh, Time for land force limit and another vassal's force limit contribution, which I'm gonna pick right now. Uh, which, as you see, gets us up to 19 million of force limit. So, you know, this way we are at vassal's force limit contribution 525%. But besides that, I still have two ideas giving us 10% of the national force limit. Oh, <laughs> yeah, if you take echo ideas, you can spawn national bank event. Uh, let's go for interest per annum if we wanted to take a 56,000 ducats, by the way. <laughs> okay, anyway, our first victim is gonna be Lan. Nah, I will go for Imperialis Rust because this. Yeah, this doesn't take, give me anything special. Yep. Ah, great relations. Uh, how about we. Yeah, I won't be able to break this great relations. I guess we get a minus to stop him because we have this reform as well. And this is funny because, guys, he has 177,000 troops. That's gonna be not an easy war. And it's crazy, but if you take a look here, you see Lan actually grew up to 1,000 development as our subject. A tiny bit too much. But yeah, anyway, I'll be taking all of these princes from them in this PZU. So there's not gonna be much left from them. And just a lot of admin mana I'll have to pay. And so this is why I'm waiting for the 11 guard reform, which is additional admin efficiency. While conquering some of the nations in Asia, I will at the same time start annexing some of them. So for example, Jazu, as you see, it's gonna only take me six years to annex them. Just to make sure that it's successful, I'm gonna also go to our nobility and take a privilege that is uh, gonna make sure that uh, I'm not gonna lose diplomatic reputation when I finish annexation. That's highly bird desire, but it's not like we care. Also minus an absolutist, but again, it's not like we care. A very important action that I'm gonna do right now, also in all of the provinces that I just conquered in Asia, 
is to clear the buildings here so we'll have space for the first three buildings. You know, this whole unification of Ash is gonna right now decrease my first three because I'm not gonna release a, a gigantic amount of first three for the subjects. But at the very end, I'm gonna gain much more first three thanks to this. For now, I've hit 20 million of max amount of the troops I can have. Yes, I just made something interesting by an accident. So, I completed the Borobodur monument, which wasn't really useful for us, but it's a slight bonus. And completing this monument forced my capital to be here, meaning that I got immediately an event that changed my capital. And since my capital is no longer in Kyoto, I am no longer a shogun. And I was afraid if that happens, if I'm no longer a shogun, I cannot have daimyos. But it seems that we kept all of these daimyos in our hands. Of course, I don't have these buttons here, but in exchange, I can go back to Mandala system, which is faster for limit contribution plus 100%. So just go ahead and pick it. I can also cancel the reform progress growth spruce here, so I can keep a hundred of absolutes. See, I'm getting more and more provinces in Asia. Why my first limit with this change is already 23 million. I'm just thinking how it works because yes, I have force limit for all, all of these provinces, but the national force limit modifiers are impacting my final force limit. It's not only impacting my local force limit; it's full quantity uh, trading ingredients. Right, it's impacting everything. So I'm honestly thinking that. I'm getting, let's say, 24 cent from Kangra, my client state. But then it's also impacted by 33%, 10%, 20%. So it's actually a bit more. We could test it, meaning that it have some relations. Lee. How about we release a client state here? Let's see. There's 22932. Let's release client state and they are called Seika. I got 50 more full cement. Of course it could be coming from the other places but this Seika that is 13 it definitely impacted more than 13 full cement. So this is making me even more hopeful that we can get a hands mineral by the end of the campaign. I just need to get more of the Asian provinces to my hands. The last idea group we have to unlock is obviously offensive which is gonna grant us yet another 15% of force limit. Next offensive idea is 15% force limit, which means we're gonna increase from 23.5 million to 25.6. God damn it, now I see how much these plants were developed to like 40 development, 35 development on average. This AI is crazy, they've dev this province 46 times. And the way I finished my, uh, all of my ideas, I was, um, Thinking about one more thing because I could get even more for limit contribution for vassals by picking uh, plutocratic idea. But you see, already half of my ideas are military, so I cannot have more than that. So one thing that could work is me switching to republic, casting mercenary ideas, and taking plutocratic ideas instead. That would decrease my absolutes a lot, so less admin efficiency and worse conquering lands to release subjects later. And that's for only an advantage of 50% more vassals for unit contribution because Merc ideas give me 50% I, and, and I would get 100% from Pluto. So that's why I think it's not worth the hassle as I want to maximize the amount of provinces. And by the way, you see our world is already having how much? 46, 56, almost 1000 of total development. It's crazy. Miltech, yeah, 108 power points and I have to take it to be up to date with the decks to keep my high innovativeness. Let's start an annexation of free agents since I'm stuck with financing an annexation of Jin. They are at war with some miners and they keep getting carpet siege, which is stopping the annexation. By the way, Estonia is growing. Uh, let's see, annexing these guys is gonna cost a bit, not as much as Jin, of course. So let's just take a look. How much time is gonna take? Seven years. So, kidok. There it is, my lovely Jin. <laughs> So that grow my quantity of provinces to already 864. We need more than that. Then you know, again, like in the previous cases, I'll have to fix the conscription centers here. So the provinces where they're not built yet, I have to do the buildings and make a slot for it. A very important event that will help with our goal is a firm hand that's giving us 
Wasser forced limit contribution plus 100%. Now I have to be very clear with you that this is not an easy event to get. That event is coming from Influence Ideas and that's a Pulse event. How the Pulse event work? They happen every couple of years depending on what kind of event. This event can happen every five years, more or less. And there's a specific date in case of Majabahi 12 October 1811 where I could get this event. But the thing is, the more ideas you take, the harder it is to get this specific event. But with less than 1% chance, I decided to take my chances and try getting this event with a few restarts. I know why I'm very dead set against safe scamming in general. I think you understand guys here that it was something that had to be done because I couldn't just wish myself luck. So I did restart 45 times to get this event. And here we go, we've got this and thanks to this, we are reaching an insane amount of Vassar Force Limit contribution on the level of 725%. Now one more event that I'm looking to get is an event from Advisor that is gonna give me additional 10% max for state modifier. You see that with this we already at 30 million of more force limit. While I was playtesting some stuff, I realized another thing that will change my strategy now. And the thing is that you cannot have more than 100 client states. There's just, the game cannot handle that. There's not enough tax for the client states. This is why I will have at the very end of this game to go even further in the conquest of my subjects, especially the ones in Europe, so I'll be able to release even more of the vassals. But before I start doing this, I definitely want to finish annexation of Bulgaria, which is planned right now for around 1813. Just before everything of this happens, I can go ahead and spend plenty of mil points on developing our colonial nations. And this European wars won't be like, for example, Brunswick that probably has like at least 10 countries to release 400,000 troops. 400,000 is allied to half of Europe, but none of them can help him. Why they have to help me? I'm gonna leverage that obviously. I'm declaring that war already, even though the annexation is still ongoing, because this siege will take time. And you know, yes, these are stab hits for this war, but it's only minus one of stability. Uh, because of the bonus that I have for impact on declaring wars. And obviously, conflicts with countries like Brunswick are gonna require us to truce break them once, because the total province war score cost is over 100%, 125%. Um, but this is fine, I will do it pretty much immediately within one war I'll attack then immediately truce break, it is fine. You know, my army cult is not too good, but I, I managed to get a 6-6 general on this place. And I'm fighting against the whole army of Brunswick <laughs> to defend my Scandinavia. I'm gonna try winning it with simply better reinforcements. Let's, uh, let's see how it goes. <laughs> if we roll zeros, yeah, that won't be a good battle for us. So for army stats, it's really similar. I've got the same morale. They have a bit more of discipline. They also have more cannons. But do they have too many cannons? Because AI, yeah, they often have too many cannons as AI. But they reinforce it correctly, yeah. Uh, I don't think I have much of a chance of winning here, but uh, we can always try. Yeah, yeah, look at the quantity of the reinforcements they're having. Just through that, they're gonna win it easily. Unless they somehow know they have enough of reserves. Even though they overstack some cover on artillery, it's still nowhere close. I can wait until either my morale goes low or uh, my artillery runs away or get, gets into, f yeah. First throw. I'm gonna go ahead and run away to Turku. They've lost much more. That's at least good news. There goes annexation of Bulgaria. See the borders are cleared here. Let me go ahead and peace out Brunswick. This is a hundred percent peace deal. You see that now their lands are for just sixty-five percent war score, and that allows me to release. Look how many subjects. Werdenberg, Bremen, East Frisia, Malankenberg, Dithmarsh, and Friesland, Austria, Cologne, Hamburg, and Pomerania. From just this one war. It's gonna be crucial. And now what I will be doing before I start a gigantic series of wars in Europe. I will start releasing all of the subjects that I can already. And my order, why would I do that? So early, you're gonna be sitting at minus 999 diplo points. Where I don't need diplo points anymore. 
as I will not be spending that on lexing subjects. And what's important, I will start filling some subjects with the provinces, which they will still have to core by themselves and decrease autonomy. So the earlier I do that, the more time they have to core these provinces and state them. That's gonna be a hell of a releasing and uh, how I'm gonna work on that is I'm gonna prioritize countries like Makassar or Tomo that have one to four provinces and once I release all of the smaller ones then I'll move to the giants like Jin etc. And remember just releasing Vassal is gonna be okay but I also need to then make them my march and that's requires a diplomat. To make it uh, a bit better, I was stacking <laughs> a bit of a modifier that's gonna be super important, which is Envoy travel time. See, I have minus 60% thanks to Petra and obviously influence ideas. Let's take a look. Right now I have 29.5 million of troops that I can field, but uh, let's take a look how it's gonna be once I release all of these subjects. Another a small reason, not huge, to do that now is also to simply let the fastest develop a bit. But before I start the grind releasing, I have to look around the provinces that I own and make sure that all of them have uh, conscription center slots. And yeah, there's like maybe 10 of them that don't. So now with this done, and I'm using uh, I think like 10 client states uh, just to like fill the gaps, like Jin would be having too many provinces, so it's to custom uh, client states in their places, and I can still release around 80 of them. And you'll see that we have right now 155 subjects. I see one, yeah, there's a couple of them that I released. And uh, I think we need a month tick to update our first limit, but anyway, in between, I will start turning the biggest subjects into marshes. So, you see, so I send it to Jin, the travel time is just three days. I can do it really fast. This one big mistake, I mean, not maybe a mistake, but I have to take back Bangkok from Ayufaya. So, how about we go here, we find Ayufaya, and we click to. Oh, it's so laggy. Seasland. Please, 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 give back my monument and yeah, it is. it stays at the same level. And you know, I can also just use the macro builder to create the marshes, they'll be uh, appearing here in the alphabetical order. And why it's important to create a march? Just take a look if I uh, do it, let's say, someone closer, Assam, you see they will get land forcing modifier plus 30%. And it's only with the top of development of March is no more than 25 of mine. So I still have to keep my of some of my own development until the end. So the biggest March is like, uh, for example, I think Ottomans and Jin. I need to keep four times the development. So if this this is 700, I need to keep 2.8 thousand of my own dev. I still have 5,000, so it's, there's still so many things I can give away to subjects and etc. So after the first month, thank you, you see uh, we are at 38.8 million of the first limit, which is fine and expected. Remember, we can still get 20% more of our national force limit modifier from these ideas, but I don't need that yet. Now the goal is to just, uh, because I don't think you can create marshes during war, I have to create as many of them as possible before I continue my wars in Europe. I still have a hundred different nations to designate as March. We are all of these green ones. You'll see that our first limit is already at the level of 40, almost 1 million. With over almost 50 more marshes to, to go to be created. We have 44 million first limit. And now we go ahead and start losing more of client states, which are gonna be focused on Siberia because we are, we are mainly using the base first thing that uh, one, one PMs will be having, and that doesn't matter if you have three or thirty development. I mean, there's a slight difference, but uh, this will be the best promises to do that. Yeah, now Siberia seems to be much more populated. Yeah, guys, I think we reached the limit of a hundred of uh, client states because if I try creating new ones, click the button, and nothing happens. So this is it. Let's wait another month tick to see the actual force limit. That's 46.4 million. And so we right now have 97 marches to be created. And our quantity of subject is 230. We gotta pump up these numbers. I'm seriously on my wits end. And I was even considering to call it quits. Because of the amount of the time that I wasted on this campaign already. But here it goes, 12 October 1820, we've got the advisor event for the land forcing modifier. And 
same as for the previous event, I did save scan for it and I spent like seven hours trying to get it. Uh, there we go. Now we only left with uh, two more ones to end this campaign. And after that time, I will reveal to you how much of force limit we actually achieved. Here are our first January 1821. We've reached not a hundred, but 60,000 regiments or 60 million of troops of the force limit. This is not the goal. This is just 60% of it. I still believe that it is really good. And I did not see on the internet a better result than that. <sighs> but I'm disappointed. So tell you what. I will finish this video over here because I've been working on it for over two weeks already. Um, like almost 20 days. And I've, I've spent really countless hours on this. So I hope that you guys appreciate it with the likes. I will go back... 90 years to around 1730 and based on the knowledge that I acquired later I'm gonna change my strategy a bit meaning that I will test if forming crash is worth it more than a hundred vassal force contribution from Majapahit ideas and most importantly since I know how to get rid of the shogunate by changing the capital I will start making everyone marches much earlier so be sitting minus 99 much earlier but it is fine because this way ideally I should have the whole world as my marches not just like 60 percent of it like right now or probably even less development wise so yes if you did enjoy this series remember to leave a like on this video and of course subscribe to the channel to get notified about the next one because the next video where i will reveal if i will succeed to make it higher this force limit this is gonna be something that I did for 1.7 million uh, income run, where I just combined all of the videos into one very shortened video with just highlights. And at the very end of it, I'm just gonna, after you know this explanation, at the very end of it, I'm gonna put just the result. I will not show you how I got to this result because no, <laughs> I already spent too much time on this, but I will show you the result, which means I'll probably spend only 30 hours playing it just for you guys to prove to you that it can be done even better i'm aiming for 80 million we'll see how much you get bye